What is up, everybody, from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome on in to the call. I'm Susanna Collins. That is Jillian Sakovitz. Um, I cannot, cannot believe that we are at this point in the season. There is less than a week remaining in the MLS regular season in 2022. And Jill, this weekend was wild. Absolutely like, wild. It was like the shot it was you in, take before decision day. Like so decision I, day halfway. I had to I had to do MLS After Dark on Saturday night, and I think there were nine games on the docket for Saturday, and a lot of them. Like I mean, these are like major, major, major implications for the playoffs in in these <sighs> matches, and like huge points up for grabs. And, and people Kaylin and I, Kaylin Carr and I, which P.S. It is his Happy birthday, birthday today. Kaylin. Happy birthday, Kaylin Carr. We love you. So Kaylin and I didn't get on the air on Twitter Spaces until like twelve forty p.m. or twelve forty a.m. Sorry, on Saturday. So it was Sunday morning. We we were on Twitter Spaces for over an hour talking about all of the games. Okay. It was and it was one of these weekends. Joe, I was saying to you, like I was on my couch watching soccer pretty much the entire weekend because it was kind of like gross outside and I didn't feel motivated. Mm. And then just having an entire weekend of MLS games that matter Saturday and Sunday. It was just, I don't know. I I'm so stoked for decision day this weekend. Cause it there's, it's just, it's just coming down to the wire as it always does. It always delivers. For me, and it was I'm hard so to excited. believe after this weekend that like, it wasn't just decision day. I, I like almost felt like I'm like, Wait, did I miss something? Was I supposed to be there? Because so much was decided. Shout out to Atlanta United, eliminated wow. from the playoffs. Wow. That was disappointing <laughs> for me. I really, I really thought I'm sure that they're going to hold on. But you know what? As other teams get eliminated, other teams rise, and that is the beauty of decision. It's day. incredible. I am going to. I'm going to be traveling to Minneapolis because Minnesota are going to take on Vancouver. Both teams, if they win, they are in. I mean, this is, it's, it's insane. It is absolutely they insane. They control their own destiny. Uh, they control their, and that is, I mean, that's kind of what you want. Like teams like Charlotte that's the game too. you want to go to. Yeah, exactly. It's just, there are, there are a lot of, there are a lot of teams that um, I think would be really, really cool to see make so, a postseason. We're both, both managers, friends of the show we've yes. had on in, in Adrian yes. Heath and Vanny Sartini. Um, but I was telling you this off cam and I want to get, <laughs> I want to get our listeners ready for this. And I want to see what our listeners think. Vanny Sartini is probably the only manager in MLS that if they should punch their ticket to the playoffs, mm -hmm. you could talk to him in post game about pizza. Mm -hmm. So I want you to find out what is the topping that would describe mm -hmm. like the victory should they win? Mm -hmm. Cause it can't, he, you know, he was really touting for margaritas. That's not a margarita win. No, you got to put some like spicy soprasata on that. <laughs> Maybe a little like hot honey. I don't know. Like get wild, mm -hmm. get crazy. Mm -hmm. He is, if, if they win and I get to speak to Vanny Sartini post game, I will thank you a hundred percent ask that question. You are a professional. You I will know. control so yourself. Excited. Me might ask about Frida. Well, the cat, I'll, I, yeah, exactly. I think that's where, where one has cat? to draw the line. Is she here? <laughs> Did she travel with and, you? And cats? on the flip side, because we got to give love to Minnesota. On the flip side, should they win, Adrian Heath will no doubt, even if they win 5 mm nothing, -hmm. he will like have some real spicy answers. And he will he be will. mad about something of and it'll be amazing. Will. No, it'll be great. I'm, I'm, I'm so stoked. It's to a go win win back. situation because they're two great teams and they're two good managers. I and know. they're two teams that are easy to root for. Exactly. Exactly. Woo! So, yeah, not mad at a trip back um, to Allianz. I, I will be, if anyone cares. Oh, yeah. If anyone cares. I know. This is I will be at Mercedes Benz Stadium where the defending champions, New York City FC, will be visiting Atlanta. And they United. clinched this weekend. They sure did. So, yeah, they, sure they, have, they will have a chance to uh, defend their title yeah, exactly. without Ronnie D. No Ronnie D. And, no um, Ronnie D. But I will be putting a bow on five years with Atlanta United. Oh, that's the other thing we wanted to do today. Um, yeah, this was a this was a, a emotional weekend for um, a lot of people involved in Major League Soccer, as a lot of the broadcast teams, the local that you broadcast do and teams, don't see exactly. So the cameramen, the sound guys, all of the producers, um, and of course the people on camera. These are teams that have been together for a long time, and this was their their sort of final. Uh, yeah, some song. have decision day, song. but yes. a lot of uh, games got picked up by national television. Yeah. So some don't. Um, so just, you know, for the people that are listening, I think just take a moment to realize that it's a labor of love mm -hmm. for a lot of people that cover MLS. 
Um, these crews work their butts off, their they tails do. off to bring access to you and to bring you these kind of really culturally specific, which will be different, but will as we move on, things get better. Yeah. Things will be better and more big time next year. Um, but it's the end of an era and yeah. just give a little love uh, to the people who have brought you your MLS coverage. Big time. Um, and we love you guys and we see we you. We love you guys. And we, we see res- you every week. We respect the heck yeah. out of and you. And we're excited to see a lot of you um, just in different ways yeah. next no, year. Bigger and better things to come for sure. Bigger and better. I know. It's exciting. Um, it speaking of better. Could this day get any better? Because we are so excited about our guest. It is our our absolutely lovely and fantastically talented colleague at MLS Espanol, Jimena Sebreros. And she is, she she does so much. She does so much. MLS Espanol is a it's a, a smaller part of our digital team. They have they don't have that many people working on it, but they work their butts off. And what they you do is know it so by what they pump out. I know exactly. They do incredible content, and Jimena has become such a trusted voice and person in that space. All of our Spanish speaking players always enjoy talking to her. Yeah. Um, she, I think that she does. She. She talks about it too. Like she is so interested in the human side of these guys. And for the ones that, um, you know, maybe aren't as comfortable speaking English or they don't speak English or they don't trust the media. Exactly. Or they don't trust the media. She has created this sort of safe, safe place for these players. And um, we get to speak with her today. And I'm super, super excited because she is, um, she's a real asset to the MLS family. Listen and learn. Listen and learn. See. Time now for our very important, very fun. Oh, we are so excited for this AT&T call to the field. MLS Espanol host and reporter Jimena Sobreros. That Thank was you. very fun. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Hola, Jimena. Hola, hola, Gil, Susana. Thank you so <laughs> very much for having me here. I admire you guys so much. I mean, the chemistry you have, the freshness, the knowledge, it, it's amazing to watch you two together. So being part, like being the trio, at least for once, it is absolutely amazing. Well, you are going to make us even better <laughs> because we need to tap into all the things, Samantha, that you bring to MLS and MLS Espanol all the time. So thank you for the kind words. I'll be honest. I don't think uh, any other guest has no, ever, has ever no. greeted us in such a way. So, Jimena, um, for our listeners, can you give us a little paragraph on what you do uh it's hard i know to put in a box all the incredible work that you bring like i said to both channels but what your role is at mls okay i think the easy way to put it into words like there's a growing latino and hispanic audience that's growing bigger and bigger with each season like with uh, big stars like Chicharito and Bella and Riusi and Iguain coming and young stars. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think a lot of not only people here in the U.S., but in Colombia, in Mexico, in Argentina, are putting their eyes to the league. And I think my role is to be like the link, like the bridge between the fans and the players. Uh, I think Latin and Hispanic audiences sometimes like to to listen and to get the information in their own language, either because they don't speak the language or because that's the way they know how to consume it. And I think we serve that. We make that safe space both for players, because the players also want to talk. And some, sometimes they don't feel they confident sure do. about doing so in English. So we are creating this safe space for them and serving both the audience and the, and the, and the player. I have been at several matches where I have seen Jimena and Adolfo kind of there are our, our MLSES team and you guys do it all. You're like a, a, a two man band. And it, it's really, honestly, it's so, it's so remarkable. And to Jimena's point, I mean, with the amount of Spanish speaking players that we now have in this league, your role is, is integral. It's essential. Um, you've developed such good relationships with these guys and it's such a pleasure yeah, watching you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the level of trust, which I think is so important, is is huge. Um, Jimena, I want to ask you a question that Jill and I get asked quite often but, in, in our role. And I think it's interesting because, you know, a lot of people want to know how you got 
to where you are, you know, like <laughs> what your, what your journey sort of looked like, like getting to you from, cause I know you're from Mexico. You now live in Brooklyn yeah. um, and now you are the face of MLS. Yes. And so what did your sort of journey, your career path look like that got you to this place where you're at in this moment? Yeah, I've been working in television, I would say like for 14 years now. That's a long time now. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a long time. Um, but back in Mexico, I used to cover entertainment, movies, music, even news. I actually started on a like kind of a late night show, um, which was super fun because it was like comedy, sarcastic, fantastic, super, super fun. But then in 2014, my husband got an offer to come and work in New York. And for me, New York was, has always been a dream. So it was, a, it was a difficult decision because at that moment, I just started a new show that was on national TV. So it was like continuing my career or mm. just like mm. follow my dream, but like following my husband's path. Mm -hmm. so as a woman, that's always like a tough decision. Like, should I follow? But then how do I make myself worth there and how do I make it there so at the moment I was like you know I'm gonna trust my gut let's go to New York it has always been a dream but at the beginning I was flying every week to Mexico to shoot the program so it was really destabilizing because I was working in my home country but living in a different country and as, mm -hmm. I, as much as I love New York New York is tough I mean you get lonely um I mean, the weather for me is right now. I'm just hating it. <laughs> like I, I, I am a, a, a summer girl. It's no Mexico Red, City. Yes, <laughs> no <laughs> layers. I don't know how to layer. Like I don't like it. <laughs> I hate this. But uh, that being said, so yeah, it was tough at the beginning. But there was a point that I think after 10 months of like constant traveling, I decided, you know, what? it's time to let go. Try to make it here in New York. Apply for, apply for my green card that few people in Mexico can. And I was incredibly lucky to be able to work here lawfully. Uh, so I was like, I have to try to make it. And I started like sending my reel here and there. And then I got a call from ESPN and I was like, what? ESPN, what? And I was like, very honest, like I, 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 I'm used to covering entertainment. I love uh, sports, but as a fan, I have never covered them before. And they were like, no, 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 this is for a show that's actually like a pop culture way to look into sports. So I started working with them, which was <laughs> incredibly, uh, I was incredibly honored to freelance for them. And that's how, that's how I, I started that back there. I met Roberto Abramovich, which is a broadcaster for NYCFC. Yep. And I think he shared my work with the lovely Crystal Valencia. And that's how my, my MLS journey started. Uh, I'll never forget the first day I met you in the MLS studios. RIP, our um, studios. RIP, how do you feel about it? Oh, I'm so sad. I miss it. I, I just, like, like, um, it, it was, was like, like a our, dorm. It was, it was like our little home, you know? Like a like, dorm. I would just, I would sleep on those couches. I would yeah, take sure naps would. in eat, the green room. Eat crumbs. I'd have crumbs but, all over me on those couches. I remember <laughs> Jimena walking in and I think, I can't remember if it was Adolfo that introduced you. It might've been Christelle. No, but, no, no, no. It was Adolfo. Christelle was not that day. Okay. And I, and your energy, I was just like, who is this like bright shining Ray diamond? Sunshine. Literally. Like I was like, <laughs> he meant, while I have cried, I and like, I'm like, uh, literally, and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, I it was like instant, instant, just a uh, girl crush. And I was like, oh. we have to hire her. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> I hope, I hope she's doing more for us. Well, it's oh, credit to you, Kamena, because it's not easy to navigate through different sports. Mm -hmm. and it's definitely not easy to yeah. navigate through different um, categories. So yeah. it's just credit to you in, in building trust within MLS, especially among, you mentioned guys like, Chicharito and you know he's talked about the mental I'm not going to use the word abuse the mental bashings maybe he's taken from the from press the yeah and the media mm -hmm. and it's just such a different way of doing it because in, in you know in the Mexican media it's soccer 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 whereas we're a little more diluted here with our other sports and then I think a lot of the Latino players have said that that they enjoy kind of the the light the brevity that that you mm. experience in in the media here in covering MLS and it's credit to people like you to kind of breaking those walls down that they've created. Yeah. Um, yeah. What have you seen with the Chicharito with the Vela that you know they they are so under a microscope in the Mexican media because of the passion 
of those fans. How do you break that down and you say, this is a safe space? I saw you do it ahead of El Trafico when Susanna and I uh, were in L.A. doing those previews mm-hmm. and you broke that down. How do you do that? Can you explain to our listeners that maybe don't know about yeah. that, about how it's different um, in the two kind of microscopes that is the North American media, or I should say the American media versus the Mexican media. Yeah. And I wouldn't say the Mexican media per se. It is the Latin American media. Mm, I think okay. in Latin America, I'm here to learn. Football, yeah, football is passion. Like football mm-hmm. is life. And it's amazing. It is amazing though, but, but sports are entertainment and we, we, we keep forgetting that. Mm-hmm. We keep forgetting that all the way through. So, the media also gets very passionate. And so the player has one bad game and his career is absolutely over. He does not serve us anymore. It is very fatalistic, you know, it's over. So it is not a very healthy relationship between player and press. And here, at least in Major League Soccer, like I remember once I went to the media marketing weekend Mm -hmm. and I was impressed. Completely in place, not only by the infrastructure, but like media and players were together to serve the audience, to serve the fans. Whereas in Latin America, or in Mexico specific, I say sometimes they, they are like in a battle. So mm-hmm. the players like build this guard and this barrier so they don't get hurt. And how come not? I mean, Chicharito has been under a loop like for his whole entire life since he was a kid yeah yeah. since he was yeah exactly and um and i think what i'm trying to do is also what you guys do like talking to the human versus the player and i think they need that and they love to talk about their lives in that way and the way they feel and the mental situation like it is very important and with chicharito and bella i mean they i feel they were like my contemporaries like I've, i've grown with them so I think what a crew! I know. I know. The Benna, <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, 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 no. I've, I've grown as a fan with them. They are fantastic. I mean, they were the promise of Mexican football for such a long time. They are still crushing it. So yeah, I, I feel very lucky to be building that space. And what you said about me and Adolfo being one team, like our team is very small. Mm-hmm. But it is really diverse. I, and that's one thing I love about, about our MLS Espanol team. We have people from Ecuador, mm-hmm. people from Colombia, people from Venezuela, from Mexico, from Honduras, I think. I don't know if I'm missing someone. But I mean, that's, that's M, like the Latin Hispanic Koreans right there. So I, I love it. That's so cool. I mean, and there's such a, all of you are just like lovely to work with as well. You know, like it's yeah. always, it makes my day when I get to see you guys on, on shoots and we don't do nearly enough together, probably because I don't speak Spanish. Maybe, maybe Jimena can help can I me ask that like department. I, um, I think um, when it's, I want to ask you about the perception of major league soccer in Latin America and Mexico, because as we have seen these stars come over, like Chicharito and Vela and Hector Herrera, and like, and, and what is what is the perception? Because I, it seems like you know there's this this budding rivalry, especially with Liga MX, that's yes. that's happening. And you yes. know, as as the U.S. has kind of had some success as well, like you know, maybe they're evening the playing field a little bit. But you you know more than anybody what what that looks like um, from that perspective. So what do they what do they think about think, major league I think, soccer? I think it has changed through the years, and specifically in the recent years, the last two years or so, I mean, you cannot deny the increase of level in major, in major league soccer. I mean, this year they won, we won, Seattle Sanders won uh, CONCACAF Champions League, no? Mm-hmm. And uh, the national team. A long team, wait. <laughs> yeah, it was a long way. But like the national team in like recent history, I mean, US has been beating us, to be completely honest. So you have to have a blind eye not to realize that the level is increasing. And um, I think we, if, like, if this merch thing became a thing, really, it would be amazing. Uh-huh. It would be amazing for the region and for CONCACAF to finally, like, imagine like the infrastructure and know-how of Major League Soccer with the experience of Liga MX is mm-hmm. combined together. It would be fantastic for the region and CONCACAF, I think, can start to look face to face with Conmebol and UEFA and and, and I think the bright the, the future is bright. 
Come into something that uh, never can get enough credit, but is obvious in listening to this is that you are an incredible English speaker. I... Um, no, don't. Yes. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Bastante. <laughs> so, um, you know, as you know, yo estoy aprendiendo uh, español, pero tu inglés es perfecto. So how for somebody that's learning English, uh, Spanish, I'm learning Spanish, your English is perfect. What is the best advice you can give somebody? Because I think all of us know that we would only be better at our jobs, mm -hmm. whether you're a producer, uh, whether you work in a front office whether you work as the kit man, kit woman, um, as you work as a reporter, what is the best advice for trying to learn another language as you navigate your career? I think consuming content in Spanish mm -hmm. in this case. Like <clears throat> to learn a language is really to practice a language, I would say. I would say. So I what has really worked for me is like I've been watching American content my whole life like I, I used to watch Friends uh, I used to watch Dawson's Creek uh, <laughs> so like, a lot of Netflix that, that exactly Seinfeld so yeah that's the way that's the best way to learn mm -hmm. a language so we have amazing content I can like give you some yes please, to please. Watch. can you share por favor, them, por favor. Uh, for our listeners like <laughs> what are some of those suggestions yes. of things that they should listen or watch okay watch so we have pretty good cinema, pretty good cinema. I mean, Alfonso Cuarón, González Iñárritu. I mean, they are the big ones, mm -hmm. Guillermo del Toro. And you can watch a little bit of their early uh, films mm -hmm. you can watch the early career of Alfonso Cuarón, which is my favorite director. You can watch Y Tu Mamá También. Oh, it's such have a you good, watched it? Such a good film. Such a good film. Such right? a good film. I know, I know you get Gael Garcia there. Oh, I was, he was my, he was my, my, my big, big Baseball. crush, probably like 12 <laughs> years ago. I was Very so into him. I was so in love with them both, <laughs> oh with God. Diego Luna and Gael Garcia, that I actually started following Pumas, which is a Liga MX team. Uh -huh. Because they were always at the stadium. Oh. Name of me, I know. Name Fun. of me. But that's me as a teenager. That's me as a teenager. So, yeah. Do you think um, Diego Luna looks a little bit like Elie Sanchez? <gasps> yes. Ah. I never thought about it. <laughs> yes, he thinking. does. Literally a couple weeks ago, I saw a photo of Diego Luna. He's in a new <laughs> film that's coming out. And I was like. God, he reminds me of somebody, and then I was like, "It's Ilya." It like he look, he they yeah, look very so similar, very similar faces. So um, yeah. So, Jimena, obviously, in incredible just job with bridging that gap, being the conduit, um, but bringing your energy and your sunshine. But before we let you go, we want to tap into some of your history. You used to work at Teen Vogue, and as you know, we are Don Garber's appointed fashion police <laughs> of the league. So when we have you on, basically the now Anna Wintour of MLS. Oh my, go oh my goodness. And you. Not I feel like Jimena needs to be a part of this. She's like, Anna Wintour, yeah, and yeah, we're like, we're like little the, policemen. Yes, like, exactly. Underneath. So, I would love to. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, yes. so. Now your test, we're going to just do, we want to get like your insight um, as we look down the stretch of the MLS season of who's impressed you. Okay. Um, so our favorite mm -hmm. topic, just first and foremost, is for you, Jimena, who is the best dressed coach in Major League Soccer? Coach. Coach. Jefe. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have one, but I must say that Luchi Gonzalez left a big space. I mean... <sighs> Relax. He was <laughs> fantastic. And He's I am coming back. He's very, coming back. I know. I am very excited about 2023, not only to see what he can do with San Jose, but what he's in store for us in the fashion world. A lot of vests. I know. A uh, lot of vests. I'm into, I'm into vests cardigans. right now. So cardigans. Cardigans, like turtlenecks, like the way he dresses. He's just fanta. I, I, I think he's very handsome. So that being said. That being said, I think Steve Cherundolo probably. I mean, he's low key. He's low key. He he just like he's Cali cool. Combi he's Cali cool. He just mm -hmm. combined like classic pieces together. And if you have a nice piece, you don't have to make a fuss about it. Just like mm -hmm. 
Very classic, Understated. very natural. Yeah, so I would I would go with Steve Sherundolo. Ooh, okay, that's good yeah. intel. That's really good intel, yeah. Sana. Um, okay, on this, a very similar note, um, who who is your your best dressed player that you have uh, encountered? I have one. Yeah, Federico Bernardeschi, hands down, hands down. He's Why? Fantastic. Why? Tell okay. us. So. First of all, so he's Italian. Here. Italian plus suits equals perfection. I know, so, like, right? The fit. It's just it's, it's all about the fit for them. It is all about the fit, and they had they just know how to fit themselves. Like yeah, and Bernardeschi, he's very like fashion forward, like very contemporary. He wears like more loose stuff, mm -hmm. sure does. very monochromatic uh, outfits. Like he is fantastic. He's very charismatic. We were all like very excited about Insigne. I give you Bernardeschi right there. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I instantly just think about when he arrived mm -hmm. and he had his press conference and he was basically he was like well, a cruise my ship head, director. My headphones are falling out. Yeah. Um sure. he basically jumped out like I think he was in what looked like white pajamas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's a press conference introduction. So usually you like stand there and you say thank you. And he was jumping up and down like he was in Ibiza yeah, with a white like, silk pajama. It was so incredible. He looked he amazing. Looked like he was on a party cruise. Like, like a booze cruise. You're, you're in Ibiza. You're not. He's I love that character. Toronto press conference. Oh, Bernadeschi. Yeah, I was Bernadeschi. I gotta be I gotta be very honest. I was very upset when they played at Atlanta United and I didn't get to see it. Yeah, him. that is uh, a bummer. I know, I know. You wanted to see it IRL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, your yeah. eyes sure on did. that. Um, for you, walking in game day, what team impresses you the most, Jimena? Style wise. But style wise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Field, I mean field play. I have a couple. I have a couple. Oh, before we move to these questions, I just wanna give a shout out to Chicharito though. <laughs> Because I think he Text has been risks. very brave. He has been very brave this season. Agreed. Specifically, yeah, specifically for a Mexican player mm. to be wearing purple pants. Like Week one. Flora. Week one. I mean, I mean, iconic. I'm very brave of him. Like mm -hmm. in Mexico, we're not used to that type of fashion in in our in our men. So breaking so barriers. On breaking that note. barriers all no, the no. way through. I mean, he knows how to make a fuss. I mean, he. I have to he, ask you then, because Jill and I, you were there. We were there at Dignity Health Sports Park interviewing Chicharito. And he came out, and because we were, this was like a few weeks after the purple pants. Yeah. And he, he came sad. out. And he came out, and Jill and I looked at each other, and we were like, and we, we, we deflated. We, we were like, cool. Like, oh. <laughs> I was I thought he was Laura. really gonna bring it. I thought he was really gonna bring and it. And then I took it personally because I was like, <laughs> oh, that's I that's know. what he thinks of us. I know. And I was and then and then but then he actually he almost apologized. He divulged that the team, like all teams do, all teams yes. do this, were like, please put on like your warm-up uniform. Yeah. yeah. And he was yeah. like, oh, yeah. and he kind of apologized for his ensemble because it was very, it was underwhelming. And I'm glad he meant it that we are yeah. on this yeah. page. Okay, so yeah, shout out to Chicharito. Chicharito. And yeah. I want to add some context there. So I covered that week one game of the LA Galaxy taking on NYCFC and Chicharito walked in in a Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> lavender pants, a like Sunlight. expensive bag. Sunlight, like the tinted and sunglasses. It, it, it made me so happy. And all I thought to myself as a woman was, I wish I looked that good. Yeah, I wish I, I had no. And then I we wish. asked him, and it as of mid-season, it was still his favorite outfit. So just big props to that outfit. It is my favorite outfit Best. of the whole th season, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. I think we're all in agreement. And okay, about the teams. About yes. Oh yeah. Teams. That. <laughs> I love everything about Austin FC. Like everything. Hello, it is, it is okay. So Sebastian Drusi. Ugh. really knows how to dress. I love his hairdo. Mm -hmm. Diego Fagundes with his hairstyle changing colors. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <sighs> Danny Pereira is really trying. Maxi Uruti. I mean, besides there are a lot of Latin players there, so I love it. And I love the energy. I would love to, to be at a match in the Q2 Stadium. I've never been you. Well, you know, maybe during the playoffs. Jimena. Please. Also, do you go. know, did you know they have a barber, they have like a chair, like they have a barber station in their no. 
at their training facility. Yes. Austin has hooked it up yes. to make sure that So, they like, that is hair. why their That's hair. Why. Yeah. And, yes. And I have I have a little bit of intel to share with you, which I think Ooh. is funny. And I found this out yesterday. So, Diego Fagundes was supposed to be on Extra Time. And he, he, couldn't, he couldn't make his interview time because he had to get his hair cut. See? Worth it. See, and I was like, this is how seriously, this is how seriously they That's take it. That's everything. It, yeah. there you it go. matters to them. So I think that is a really good shout. Um, I agree. A hundred percent. Austin, Austin FC. Yeah. Austin FC. Well, we kind of hit our next question now with the hair. I know that's it. Austin FC best hair. That was our, yeah. I think like oh. as a whole, I would say Austin FC probably does have the best hair collectively. It's very, um, like crisp. I don't know. I don't know what the really cool word is for that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Done well. Um, so then on a final note, Jimena, who would you look at and you say has like a lot of like potential? Like you look at them and you're like, I would love to <laughs> help you. <laughs> potential. That's a nice way to phrase it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no one. I also appreciate that they don't care. Like I like both vibes. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm a pro choice all the way. So I, I love that they like. Yeah, I don't really care. I love soccer. I love football. This is what I know. This is what I know to do. And I don't really care about the the, the other stuff. So I, I really enjoy that. What I do not like, and it has to do with hair. I don't like well, the man bun. I don't like the. Not man a man bun fan. fan. No, yeah. Not a man bun fan. No. I, so it's I think so Gareth Bale should really get rid of like yeah. It's really not working. I agree with you. Susanna loves man buns. I, yeah, on man the buns. right, on the right, on the right head, I think I think it can look it can look quite fetching. What do you think about Gareth Bale? I love that the description. description. <laughs> yeah, man buns. Like I just look at it and think, like, wow, how do you have no flyaways? Like I get insecure about man buns <laughs> because I can never, I can never, I can never obtain even a man bun of that level. Well, remember even when Zlatan, I love it. Zlatan's was like yeah. slick. Like it was like, and I'm like, how do you have no hair bun? Out of Yeah. <laughs> Gareth Bale. Again, thing. just making me insecure. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, this is the only thing I know how to do with my hair and it's really doing nothing. <laughs> I, I really have this type of straight hair. Should we try so. man buns? We should have an episode where the three of us like two, try our like best just man like trying to like slick it back. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm yeah. down. Mm -hmm. On Let's another do day. On another I'm not day. allowed to put my hair up today. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, Jimena, <laughs> this has been so much fun. We so absolutely. Much fun. Thank you so much. We, we adore you. We respect you so much and the incredible work that you do for uh, MLS Espanol. And I am so looking forward to just future collaborations. Yeah. I hope to see you during the playoffs, perhaps. Hopefully. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to work together more. I think we, I we really need to like intertwine and merge like we both great. Must, like, must, must. I will find. I'm. I'm going to work on uh, my Espanol, and I'm going to watch see, uh, all of those. All of those uh, recommendations. Yes. See. Awesome. Thank you see, so see. much, guys. Um, Jimena, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, gracias Jimena. Here for this. Okay, so I'm. I just want to get this out there. I'm not here for retirement announcements. I always get really sad in this time of year, it starts to happen. We've got Drew Moore, another friend of the show. He's hanging up, the, all hanging up the boots. Graham Susie, like there's a whole bunch. My idol, Gonzalo, Gonzalo Eguain. Eguain. I know, and honestly, it has been, it has been a- Say it an so, emotional, Gonzalo. Emotional, so I am not here for players hanging up the boots, but what I am here for are, uh, teams that do an incredible job of paying their respects to, yeah, to those guys are that have been always there. so fun to watch and if you watched san jose this weekend who beat minnesota by the way um shay salinas who is an absolute mls legend a 15-year veteran of the league um the san jose earthquakes their walkout every single player wore an old shay salinas jersey that's a very good idea and i got a little bit uh -oh. I got a little bit emotional and uh -oh. I just thought what a beautiful tribute to Susanna an incredible tears. career I just thought what like whenever you nice retire touch. whenever you retire <laughs> I know you'll be 85 and I'll be right there with you because we'll announce our I'm gonna make everyone wear like Collins things <laughs> oh my god I yeah, see it already oh man 
it really it just hit me hit me right in the feels but i just thought bravo san jose because i thought that was such a classy san jose such, such a good touch <sighs> um loved it well um i felt like the biggest loser in the world <laughs> after this weekend when i saw where everyone else was um, whether that was at the nfl game in london or the bad bunny concert at sofi stadium uh so vanessa bryant i follow her you know on Twitter and Mm -hmm. on Instagram and she's an incredible woman. And I just happened to peek that she posted a selfie with bad bunny. So I was like, Oh, of course she did. And then I see that she posted a story um, about being, of course, you know, watching from a suite and all these things. And the people in her suite were incredible. And I love that it spanned into our little soccer world. Cindy LaRue was in a like a really hot little like black bikini top Mm -hmm. with like a blazer Mm -hmm. and when you and I went to the Bad Bunny concert I remember being very impressed by the amount of women who were just like I'm gonna wear jeans and a bathing suit top yep I remember like being like you're amazing yeah wow the guts Uh, and leave it to Sid so you got Sydney LaRue Vanessa Bryant and Candace Parker and I Candace Parker's wife just hanging out in a suite screaming to Bad Bunny. It's pretty cool. So I just, I loved that Bad Bunny yet again crept back into our little soccer metaverse. I know, via I know. Sid- Via Sydney LaRue. And then you mentioned the um, the NFL game in London. Did you see the entire- Go Vikings! The entire- Woo! <laughs> the entire cast of Ted Lasso was there. And one of them, the guy, his name is Billy. He had a Chicago Bears jacket on and it made me so yeah. happy. Yes. And, and Billy, then he, Matt Turner was there. I was just like, oh. and then that guy got to see the Vikings. Win. I know. Uh, I know. Mm. Matt Turner. It was adorable. Anyway, I love to see a guy like Matt Turner, like who was just hanging out mm. in New England, like an average guy I now know. just being a badass watching. I know. Like with c- like celebs. Yeah. Literally with the entire cast. Um, so that All was right. Kind of cool. So, well, I feel like, I uh, still feel like a loser. What else? Oh, this is going to make me feel like a bigger loser. Great. Okay. okay. I'm ready for this. You guys just pile it on. I am. I, I, I was floored. I was absolutely floored by, uh, the efforts of Nashville SC. So was I. So as we know, the end of season awards are, are coming up. We get to vote on it, which is very exciting. Um, and a lot of teams will do something like this. Like if they have a player um, or a coach that is in contention, they'll, you know, do things to kind of just like, you know, keep it at the top of your mind. Well, Nashville SC, Music City, hello, did something so freaking cool. This is a vinyl that like a record player like you put on. And it is like the back. Yeah. All of Hani Mukhtar's goal calls this year which is so cool so last night i have a record player as you know i put it on and i was like this is genius also it's signed by honey Mukhtar. this is good like this was i and i you know and i i said this i tweeted this out last night i do my absolute best you know we do it to be just like completely impartial when it comes to things like this cannot this be bought like we cannot be bought but this is next level and i love records i have a no. huge record collection like you know, i, was I like, love this for you this just spoke to me <laughs> So I love many this levels, and I just huge thanks to Nashville SC, Matt Bodiford, um, for sending this along. It's it's so cool. And look at the bottom it says all right. So it has side A and side mm-hmm. B, which I love, yep. and then it has all the goal calls. And then I love at the bottom it says bonus tracks coming through October 9th. I mean, because they know they, there's, honestly, they know there's like, more to come. No detail overlooked. I just yeah. thought this was the coolest and needed to get. This, this is a really time. great idea. And Nashville, I'm not offended at all <laughs> that you don't care about me. <laughs> I, I, for one, cannot, cannot, you know what, you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. We're so, I'm so petty that you can be, I think you can be unbought more mm-hmm. than you can be, one can yes. be bought. <laughs> Not, probably, let's probably be honest true. though, I don't hold this against Honey. I give Honey a lot of credit <gasps> and I really enjoyed our interview with him that we he did was during great. the All-Star game. He was so funny. So funny. Yeah. So funny. We're, so yeah. We've loved Tani and I've loved uh, just watching him score big. I know. This year. I know. And honestly, a legitimate contender for MVP. So absolutely. In all job. seriousness, absolutely. Good, good job, job, Nashville Good SC. job, Nashville SC. Oh, God. Um, I have a little bit more. Yes. Uh, a, word, a word to the wise. So um, on, on kind of a serious, unfortunately, my this is what I am not here for. Um. I had a little bit of a scary lift experience this weekend Mm -hmm. and I share this not to share that I had a bad lift ride or that this driver is bad. I share this more for women and people to keep themselves safe. Um, Let's just say the gist of it was I had a one hour 
um, ride share ride home from the airport to my home after covering a Big Ten game late at night. It's like 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday night. And it was the worst driving I've ever experienced. Uh Fast, reckless, 90 miles per hour in a 55. And I just felt incredibly uncomfortable the whole time. Like, listen, I just got in your car. I'm not trying to up my risk of death tonight with you. (laughs) And it it was, it was, to be frank, it was, it was out of control. And you kind of toy with, I know anyone can relate. Do I say something? Like, hey, do you, can you slow down? Or do you not? What if you make that person? Yep. Mad. So I didn't say anything and it was incredibly uncomfortable. It was incredibly scary. And I never do this clearly because I did it wrong, but I got home and I gave him a deservingly poor rating. The only time I use it is for fives and tips. You know, if someone's like talking to their mom on the phone, I'm not like, you get a four or yeah. three. I gave him a bad rating like he deserved. I wrote that he was speeding, uh, driving behind other cars, swerving in and out of lanes. Uh, re- just risking my life in the yeah. hopes that the next person he didn't do that to. Well, well, learn my lesson to everyone listening. Never give, I don't know what it's like with Uber, never give a Lyft report right away. Yeah. Never. They say you're anonymous, but in common sense's world, you're not anonymous. They did it right away. Right away, they shared it with him because I then, I then got an email saying like, hey, you know, maybe you spilled coffee. Maybe you had a bad day, but like, you know, you got a bad, you got a bad rating. So I then obviously knew who it, who mm-hmm. it was. Yep. Well, it was a retaliatory rating um, because he got the feedback right away. And I share that again, just to keep people safe. Cause now this person knows where I live. Mm-hmm. It's late at night and they accused me, listen to this, of vomiting. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. They accu- this driver saw that I gave him a poor rating to try to save the life of the next person in the car. And he accused me of vomiting, gave me a bad rating, (laughs) and Lyft charged me $80 for my faux vomit. For cleaning me. Which I, if someone does vomit, I get. Sure. So then I'm like, you "You know what? I'm so tired. I'm going to bed. I will just deal with this tomorrow in a rational world. But listen, listen. So that's fine. No, it's not fine. No, it's, it's screwed up. You're right. But then I tell Lyft what happened to me. I even send a link like, hey, this is me on Big Ten at 7 p.m. Eastern. I got on a 9 Eastern flight and was home at 10 in the lift. And they side with the driver. They side with the driver. They say, sorry, the driver gave a very so a woman detailed- feels unsafe. Yeah. The driver retaliates, now knows where you live. Mm-hmm. We don't know anything about this person. No. Uh, and, and they... I truly just think that this person was cranky, having a bad night. Wow. Maybe was upset that my location was an That's hour away. That's extremely However, upsetting. However, I share this again to just tell everybody, do not share your feedback yeah, right, right away. away. Because I see it as an incentive it deters women from sharing truly scary experiences and sharing dangerous experiences because this person retaliated, uh, this person lied, mm-hmm. and they were then uh, believed by Lyft in their uh, one minute quote in, quote investigation. So yeah. again, I don't share that for cancel culture. I don't share that to hurt this driver. No, it's um, awareness. But I share it so that people really don't. Um, no, do not incredibly... share your rating right away because I did think this person knows now where I live and they're obviously mad at me and, uh, it, it was really unsettling. So oh, that's super unsettling anyway, and disappointing and, um, don't do it. Yeah. That's, that's a really do better, do better lift, uh, protect people who speaking want to protect of, others. Speaking of that, speaking yeah, of that, um, this isn't to re-traumatize our listeners. No. This is again for awareness, the long awaited independent investigation into the abuse, um, commissioned by the U S soccer federation went public yesterday on Monday, um, into U S women's, the U S women's national team. The investigation was led by the former attorney general, Sally, Yates, um, and she said this, our investigation has revealed a league in which abuse and misconduct, verbal and emotional abuse and sexual misconduct has become systemic, spanning multiple teams, coaches, and victims. So we know that this is upsetting. It's traumatizing. Um, I urge people, though, to to go read it. Uh, it's important to know that it's out there, but more so just to give credit to the hundreds of people that gave statements, that gave interviews um, to bring this level of openness mm-hmm. to, to something that was clearly hidden for so 
long. I can't imagine it was fun for anyone to go no. through this. And so thank you. I will say too, um, I read maybe like three or it's four pages. Read. It's hard. It's a tough read guys. Um, and, and so, and I, like Jill said, this is not to re-traumatize anyone, but it, it is important to have awareness about what was going on. And hopefully now that it is out there and the people that have shared, um, these harrowing experiences have, have been given a voice, um, things can change. So I, to your point, just, yeah, it's out there. Read it when you feel like you're in a, a, a spot to do it. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, we, we did an episode where we talked about this at length when the, yeah. last year when it came, when these allegations came out. Um, so this is just something that we kind of thought that we should, uh, should bring up and make people aware that this, uh, decision or the findings are, are now out there. So the curtain, I don't think in any world you yeah. ever find out everything, no. but the curtain is open and credit to all of the organizations and the people, 100. the coaches, uh, that helped pull that curtain open yeah. a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. Um, guys, what's on tap? Well, <laughs> as we, gosh, we discussed, uh, decision day, y'all. It is this weekend, Sunday, October 9th. Um, the Eastern Conference games all kick off at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Western Conference matches kick off at 5 p.m. Eastern. Like I said, I'm going to be in Minnesota for mini, taking on Vancouver. Um, Jill's going to be in Atlanta. It's just going to be such a fun day. This day always delivers, you guys. There's always drama. It's ridiculous um so if you um if you can't wait though for for some good mls action you've got some tomorrow night um wednesday so head on over to mlssoccer.com and you can check out the schedule there's a couple big games like orlando's playing miami and that game got picked up and then is it um is it charlotte columbus yep oh another game that got picked up like these are all teams that are trying to get it it's great it's great i'm just so excited i'm so stoked (laughs) um (laughs) Oh, and you want to add another screen to your decision day yeah. experience? Well, tune in right here. Uh, we have a watch along show with Andrew Weeby, Matt Doyle, Kaylin Carr, who will take you through all of the action. You know where Suzanne and I will um, be. David Goss will be coming to you from Orlando. And Christina Uncle oh, will she's also a join as a rules expert. Cannot wait for that she's to awesome. see her on our channels. Uh, it all kicks off 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on MLS Twitch and YouTube. Let's go. Um, also, this is pretty cool. The inaugural MLS Next Pro Cup is this Saturday, hey. October 8th at Lower.com Field as the Columbus Crew 2 hosts St. Lu- St. Louis City 2. Um, both teams finished first in their respective conferences. Tickets are still available at Ticketmaster, and you can tune into that one at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on MLSNextPro.com. I was at the first match of that, and St. Louis played, and so now they're in the final. It's like a real full circle moment pretty cool that's very pretty cute. cool man this is a stacked episode i thought i thought today i was like oh talk about mls mostly talk to jimena but here we are <laughs> seven hours later thank we you for it. listening we love you guys we really do you're the best hey enjoy decision day we'll see you on the other side What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call-Up. And if you want more Call-Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call-Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?